multiplying decimals by a whole number. This here is red, 4 and 2 tenths times 3. And if we think about this, multiplication is just repeated addition. So we would be looking at 3 of those, 4 and 2 tenths, and again I said it was repeated addition. 3 sets of 4 and 2 tenths. We know how to add these here. 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. 4 plus 4 plus 4, that's 4 ones, 4 ones, and 4 ones is 12. And here this is 3 2 tenths, 3 2 tenths is 6 tenths. So adding those 3 together, we do get 12 and 6 tenths. When we're multiplying here, it's much the same way then as if we are multiplying 42 times 3, where we go step by step. And 3 times 4 being 12, that was 12 tens there, because the 4 was in the tens place. So finally, back to our decimal number here. 4 and 2 tenths times 3, we start with the tens place, where we go 3 times 2 tenths. 3 times 2 tenths is 6 tenths, and that's why we do put the 6 there. And so that it's 6 tenths, that's why the decimal place is right there. 3 times 4 is 12. That was 3 times 4 ones, which is 12. One of the things that might help us when we're multiplying with decimals is to really think about what the answer should be meaning what it should be around or an estimated answer. And if we're estimating this product, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a look here at the 57 here and 57 and 8 tenths, that is, and round it to the nearest whole number and still multiply it with the 8. We keep the other factor the same. So 58 times 8. If we figure out the product of 58 times 8, since we only have one decimal number here, this will work. 8 times 8 is 64. 4, regroup the 6. 8 times 5 is 40. Plus 6 is 46. So my answer should be around 464. This will help us in placing the decimal point. I've rewritten this problem as... 57 and 8 tenths times 8, and what we're going to do is we're going to go about our multiplication thinking and ignoring the decimal point for now. 8 times 8 is 64, 4, regroup the 6, 8 times 7 is 56, plus 6 is, <laughs> brain's not working, 62, 2, regroup the 6, and 8 times 5 is 40, plus 6 is 46. And like I said before, is we ignore the decimal point. Is 462, 4,624 our answer? No, our answer should be around 464. So what we need to do is we need to place our decimal point so our answer is very close to that. And so that's where it is that we would place our decimal point. That way we have a 462. 460 number, just like that is a 460 number. Four hundreds place, six tens place, four ones place, two ones place, and then we add a tens place. All right, it's time for you to try. We have 53 and six tenths. Remember, we're going to round that to the nearest whole number. We'll still multiply by eight, so let's figure out our estimate first. And then we'll figure out our actual product, placing that decimal point using our estimate. Go ahead, hit pause. Again, I had asked you to start with your estimate first. 53 and 6 tenths, nearest whole number.
on this place there is 54. And I now have to do this product here. Let's go and do that there. 8 times 5 is 40, plus 3 is 43. So 432 is my estimated answer for the product of 53 and 6 tenths times 8. My actual answer is right here. 8 times 6 being 48. I ignore the decimal point for now. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 4 is 28. 8 regroup the 2, and 8 times 5 is 40, plus 2 is 42. Now I look at my estimate. Okay, I want a number in the 432. So I place my decimal point right here in between those two 8s. Let's take a look at a hundredths place number. We'll use that same approach. 3 and 89 hundredths is close to 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Kept that other factor the same when I was estimating. For my actual product, I have 4 times 9, which is 36. 6 regroup the 3. 4 times 8, which is 32, plus 3, which is 35, 5, regroup the 3, 4 times 3, which is 12, plus 3, which is 15. And then I look over here at my estimate, oh, a number around 16. The answer is not 1,556. I have to place a decimal point. And then so I place the decimal point right here. So I also have a tens place and a ones place. If I had placed it here, my number would have been 155.6, which is nowhere anywhere close to 16. As you see here, I've shown you the steps if we had worked with a thousandths number, 6 and 578 thousandths times 5. That same approach where we would have found our estimate first of 35. And then, since we had 35 here, that's how we could have placed our decimal point. We would have ended up with the blue number there. And then the light blue is where it is that we would have placed our decimal point. You'll notice with 6 and 578 thousandths that there were three decimal places after the decimal point. The tenths place the hundredths place, and the thousandths place. And since there was three decimal places within this product here, that's why we have three decimal places within this right here. This was a whole number. How many decimal places are in each of these numbers? Let's take a look at this first number here. How many decimal places are there? Just one. A tenths place. Let me go ahead and write a one here. There's one decimal place. For that next number, how many decimal places are there? There's three. How would we read that number? Nine and one hundred twenty-four thousandths. Where there's a tenths place, a hundredths place, and a thousandths place. How many decimal places are in that final number? Hopefully you said two. Understanding how many decimal places will help you place decimal point when we're working with that multiplication problem. So on the next screen, I'm going to show you some multiplication problems that involve this, these numbers here, and we're going to place that decimal point. So in our answer for this problem here, our answer is only going to have one decimal place. Our answer to this here, when we multiply this by a whole number, will have three decimal places. And our answer for this here, when we have two decimal places, again, we'll only have two when we're multiplying by that whole number. I want you to go ahead and write these out for yourself where you're going to place the decimal point, and don't worry, I'm going to give you the product. 
without the decimal point. So here come the products. You may write them from left to right. There are the products without the decimal places. So go ahead and copy those down. and place your decimal points. And the way that you're going to place your decimal point again is that you count the number of decimal places. Go ahead and hit pause to place those decimal points in each of those answers. For that first problem, again, we had a decimal number times a whole number so we just look at the decimal numbers and we see one decimal place. We see one decimal place within that whole thing that we're multiplying there. So we know within our answer we're going to have one decimal place. And that's why we place the decimal point right here in between the 6 and the 8. In between the 6 and the 8. So that's right there. For that second one, the 9 and 124 thousandths had three decimal places. There's no decimal places with the 4 here. And so that's why we'll have three decimal places within our answer, 36 and 496 thousandths. Look over your final answer and make sure that you place that decimal pl point in the correct spot. And so you better have placed your decimal point in between the 9 and the 3 because there were two decimal places after the 18 holes here. There's no decimal places here with that whole number, so there's two within this product here, and so there's two within your answer. That was and so that's how we place the decimal point, and that's how we will multiply. Let's review. Here's 97 and 63 hundredths times 8. I know in my answer I'm going to have two decimal places, and I explained earlier as to why it is that's the case, where it is that we estimated 97 and 63 hundredths as 98 times 8. And there's that product of 98 times 8 being 784, so I know my answer should be around 784. This is also could be a check to make sure that you did all of your steps of your multiplication correctly. So, when we're working with this decimal number, we know at this point that we just work with 9,763 as if that decimal point was not there. And so we go step by step, starting with the ones place of 8 times 3, which is 24, 4 regroup the 2, 8 times 6, which is 48, plus 2, which is 50, 0 regroup the 5, 8 times 7, which is 56, plus 5, which is 61, and 8 times 9, which is 72, plus 6, which is 78. I had said 784 should be about a 784, and in this case, where we place our decimal point then is right here. Again, there's two decimal points. So the last thing I showed you, two decimal points within this product here. There's two decimal places there. Two decimal places. I think I might have said point. Two decimal places within this product. This was that whole number. No decimal places. So there are two decimal places within our answer. And that's how you go about multiplying with decimals and a whole number.